In this video, we're going to take an in-depth look at the Bushcraft Essentials Bushbox LF, standing for Large Folding. If you're interested, keep watching. Okay, before we begin, I just want to declare that I paid for the stainless steel version of this stove. However, Bushcraft Essentials did send me the titanium version of this stove, along with the accessories that I'm going to show you in a few minutes' time. I also want to declare that I'm receiving no compensation for making this video. Okay, as with my other videos, what we'll do now is we'll go down to the tabletop. I'll show you what comes with the stove how it's assembled, we'll go over the specifications, I'll talk about using it with wood and some alternative fuels, and then we'll get outside and do some demonstrations. So when your LF arrives from Bushcraft Essentials, it'll come in this cotton canvas case, which has a single belt loop on the back and a D-ring. And if this case looks familiar, it's pretty much identical to the case that comes with the XL, of course, except for size. So inside of the case itself is the stove, and the trivets. Now the beauty of this stove as well as the XL is how easily it is assembled. To assemble it, you literally just pull it apart, let the ash pan drop into place, the fire grate drop into place, add your pot, uh, your trivets on top, and you're ready to go. So here is the stove in stainless steel. Let me put the pot stands on top. And here is the stove in titanium. And you can see that they are virtually identical in almost every way. Now you can see there is a bit of a color differentiated with the stainless steel and the titanium taking on that little bit of a rainbow color. You can also differentiate the titanium from the stainless steel by the TI that is cut into the side of it. And of course, if you pick the two of them up at the same time, you're going to know which one is the titanium right away. So I'm going to go over the specifications for both stoves. And let's to start, they come in at 5.5 inches tall or 14 centimeters. They are square, so they are 3.9 inches wide, which is 10 centimeters. And they have a burn chamber depth from the fire grate to the top of the stove of 4.2 inches, which is 10.6 centimeters. Now the stainless steel version comes in at one pound, one ounce, which is 471 grams. And the titanium version comes in at 9.7 ounces, which is 274 grams. So it is about 40% lighter than the stainless steel version. So let me set the stainless steel version aside. Now, I think it's only fair that I bring in the XL stove so that I can show you some size comparisons between the two. I'm also going to show you some design similarities and differences between the two stoves so you can see how much larger the XL is overall. Now, let's talk about what's the same and what's different. So to start with, the XL on the back of the stoves has these protrusions to lock in your trivets and it will accept four trivets on the back. The LF does not have that. So the trivets come separate from the stove and they're stored separately inside the same case, but they're not attached to the stove physically. So that's one major difference between the two. On top of that, there are a few things additional on the LX, or the XL, sorry, that don't exist on the LF. So let's start with the front of the stove. Front at the top on the XL are four holes, front and back, that allow you use tent pegs to run through, either as a pod stand or for grilling, if you wish. The LF does not have those. On the sides of the stove, the XL and the LF both have four slots for trivets, and they also have two holes for tent pegs. And while we're looking at the sides of the stove, you can see that on the XL, there are three pair of slots for trivets to adjust different heights for alcohol stoves inside, whereas the LF only has two slots, but those slots also have the holes that you can use tent pegs through as well. The one other difference back to the front of the stove is that the XL has an extra set of slots at the top on the outside edges, front and back, for use with trivets, where the LF does not have those extra slots. But they both do have the locking notches for using a grill for grilling or the universal plate on top of the stove. So those are pretty much the same, or the similarities and differences. One more significant one, and that is if you look at at the fire grate inside of the XL, you can see the holes are 
are quite large as compared with the LF, which are quite small. The advantage going to the LF, in my mind at least, because you can use wood pellets inside of the stove without any of them falling through the fire grate to the bottom of the stove. The smaller holes should also slow combustion down a little bit. And the advantage there is that you should retain more of your hardwood embers for grilling. Okay, let me take the XL aside. And what I want to do now is to bring in a few of the options that you can purchase for the stove. So if you bought the stove in its base model without any of the uh, accessories that came with it or package deals, what you'll get is the stove and two trivets. So one of the things you could do right off the top if you want it is to buy an extra set of trivets. I recommend those, but they're uh, second to the next one that I'll recommend. Of course, an extra set of trivets will allow you to set a smaller pot on top while using the first set to support a Trangia stove inside. However, the accessory that I highly recommend is the universal grate. So the universal grate can be used in a couple of positions. We'll show throughout this video on how it can be used with the stove, but this can be used for using with wood pellets in a raised position above the, the floor plate. It can be used for supporting your trangia. It can also be used for grilling on top. So I think this is a good accessory to pick up. Now, if you do want an extra set of trivets but don't necessarily want to pay for them or they weren't part of a package deal that you purchased, you can also use tent pegs. Now, I have two titanium tent pegs here, but stainless or aluminum tent pegs will work as well. And these tent pegs can be used in conjunction with the holes either side to side as you can see now, and uh, uh, that will allow you to set your trangia in the stove or to set a smaller pot on top if you don't have another, if the pot's smaller than the, or yes, yeah, smaller than the, the size of the stove is. Okay, two more accessories to come with, and this one is kind of cool. This is a titanium base plate support plate that also acts as an integrated case for carrying the stove with. So to use this as a support plate, lay it down, and you'll notice that there are slots on the bottom of the plate, or on the plate itself, that match up with the legs on the stove. And if you insert those legs inside, you now have an extra uh, stable stove because it's wider again than the, the stove itself is, but it also allows to be used on, on soft surfaces such as snow or mud with giving you a lot of support. It should, well, it will also act as a, an extra layer of protection should any hot embers or coals fall out between the fire grate and the ash pan. So that works pretty good, but it doubles up as a case for storage and transport. After you collapse the stove down, it will fit inside, securely inside, and now your stove is secured inside and none of the uh, dirty parts, the ashy parts on the inside of the stove are gonna come in contact with anything inside your case. And it only adds a few scant ounces, which of course I'll put on the screen to go with this. So that is another option. Final option I'll show you is a nice leather accessory case as well. And you know, it does come with a good quality canvas case, but if you want to upgrade to the leather case, then this will accept the stove with or without the uh, optional base plate as well. All right, so those are the accessories that come with the stove as well as specifications. Let's talk about what fuels you can use with the stove. All right, so the first fuel we'll talk about using with the LF stove is wood, of course, since it is a wood stove. So there are two primary ways you can use wood with this stove, as with most stoves. First off would be the more traditional way of starting a small fire inside, then feeding wood in through the feed port and building it up to whatever you need. And in so doing, you have the option to feed as much or as little wood as you want, depending on how much heat you want to produce, whether it's boiling water, simmering, or maybe grilling uh, something over top of it. So that works well. The downside, of course, of that, of course, it means that you have to constantly be feeding wood in to control the amount of heat that you're looking for. The option to that is to preload the stove with wood and vertically stand it till it's completely filled up, then build a small fire on top of that and allow that fire to work its way down through the fuel. The advantage there is that you don't have to do any refueling, at least for the amount of time that it takes to go through the load of fuel inside of the stove. The disadvantage is that you get, a, well, it's, I guess it's an advantage depending on how you look at it, you get a steady, even, pretty intense heat for the entire time, but you don't get to control the temperature as well. So either option will work. The one thing 
that is strongly advised against by Bushcraft Essentials is building a Swedish fire torch inside of the stove. So that would be where you would take a log of a smaller diameter, slightly smaller than the, uh, the size of the stove, cut it to the length so it's just below the top, split it into four pieces, move those four pieces into the corners, then build a fire down inside. That way you get an intense amount of heat coming up through the center of the fire, uh, the Swedish fire torch. But what happens is you get inconsistent heating of the side plates all around. And it is that inconsistent heating, where it's hot spots and cooler spots, that Bushcraft Essentials states could cause warping of the stove. So it's strongly advised against. Now, my experience with this stove and the stainless steel stove is I've experienced no warping whatsoever, with the exception of a small bit of bowing in the fire grate inside of the stoves. And I do mean a small amount, and it does not affect the stoves either collapsing and putting it away or assembling the stoves or in using the stove in any way. Otherwise, I've had no warping with either of these stoves to date. Okay, so with wood, I would recommend that you cut your pieces of wood no longer than six inches like this. So this is a four inch piece of wood and that will disappear inside of the stove. A six inch piece of wood can go in at an angle almost completely with just a small portion of the wood sticking out. However, if I use something longer than that, then it's going to have quite a bit of the wood sticking out. Now, the downside of that is as the wood inside of the stove is consumed, the outside piece becomes heavier and it starts to fall out. That's okay as long as you're paying close attention and you're constantly pushing the stoves, the sticks in. But to make it easiest, just use something six inches or shorter when that you're feeding into your stove. Okay, so that's using the stove with wood. Let's talk about alternative fuels. So the first alternative fuel most people turn to with their LF is alcohol. And more often than not, it's the Trangia stove like this one. Now, you can use the Trangia stove with the LF in a couple of different setups. So let me show you the, the setups. So the first setup would be to take your two pot trivets and run them through either the top or bottom set of slots on the sides, depending on what you want your pot gap to be, pot gap being from the top of the Trangia burner to the bottom of the pot you're using. I'm setting the, the trivets in through the lower set of slots and sliding them into place. Now I can take my trangia, it'll fit between the bars and hold the trangia in place in the center. And now that will give me a pot gap of one and a half inches to the top of the stove. And I feel that's probably one of the, just about the ideal pot gap for efficiency in terms of how quickly it'll bring water to a boil and how quickly it'll, and uh, yeah, how quickly it'll, it'll go through its alcohol. So it seems to be the, the best balance there. Now, as I mentioned, you can set it a little higher if you want to bring the stove closer to your pot that will slow down your boil time, but it will also conserve a little bit more of your alcohol. Now, what's obvious is I don't have anything to set my pots on. Now, if my pot's bigger than the size of the stove, that's not an issue. But if I'm using a small pot on top of this, then I need some way of supporting it. So if you did have a couple of temp pegs, whether or not they're the titanium ones or not, this is where you would run those through and use those to some support your pot on top. Alternatively, I could have used my tent pegs in place of the trivets to support the trangia and use the trivets on top to support the pot. Either option works well, but there is another option which you may want to consider. So if you did purchase or if your stove did come with the universal grate, this is where it comes in handy. Because as with the XL version of this stove, there are notches on the front of the stove, right beside the bottom of the feed port, and they match up with little tabs or protrusions on either end of the universal grate. And what that allows you to do is to set the grate in with the protrusions through the notches and drops into place. And now they can be used for a couple of things. So in terms of alcohol, this sets in the allows you to set your trangia right on top of the universal grate now you'll get a pot gap from the top of the burner to the bottom of your pot of one and one eighth inch so that's near perfect as well I, I like using it this way it's just so simple just to drop that in and use it like that so that's another option for using alcohol stoves the other benefit of having this to use with alcohol stoves is it doesn't have to be a trangia it can be any other alcohol stove that you have as well as we're going to talk about alternative fuels that you can use this with in a moment 
Okay, so that's setting up and using the stove with alcohol. Now let's take a look at a couple more alternative fuels. So after alcohol, the first alternative fuel I like to use myself is wood pellets. And wood pellets will work very well inside of the LF without any modifications whatsoever because of course, as I showed you a minute ago, the minute ago, the fire grate has holes small enough that the wood pellets won't drop through. And I can get two cups of wood pellets inside of the stove just the way it is, so enough so that they don't come out of the feed port. And those pellets will last me about 40 minutes burn time. So that's pretty good performance from the stove. However, I can modify that and get by dropping in the universal grate as I did a minute ago for alcohol and now bring the grate halfway up the side of the stove using one cup of wood pellets. They're pushed a little bit to the pack just so you don't lose pack back of the stove so you don't lose any out the front. And then I can let that run for about 20 minutes. So it's just an option to be able to use fewer wood pellets in the stove if you want to. It also brings the flame a little closer to the bottom of the part, bottom of the pot. So the reason I like wood pellets so much is because they are an economical alternative to a lot of fuels that still provide me an open flame. They're cheap, easy to carry, and they're there if I have them in my backpack when I can find any suitable wood because it's wet and uh, I can't get a fire started. Then if I use the wood pellets and I have some wood that's not quite as dry as you would like it to be, you can always feed that in on top of the wood pellets and use it in combination. So it just provides you another option there. So that's using the wood stove with wood pellets. Now let's talk about a few more fuels. So a discussion on alternative fuels in the LF wouldn't be complete unless we talked about using solid fuels like an Esbit cube. And you can use your Esbit cube right on top of your universal grate and you get a pretty good pot to gap distance there. Uh, my recommendation, of course, would be to use something to contain the Esbit tablet, like a, t a piece of aluminum foil folded up around the sides, or maybe a small little dish like this, or some type of a flat plate to hold the, thing, the tablet on. It will slow the combustion of the tablet, prevent you from losing any down through the holes in the fire grate there, and will just give you better performance. Alternatively, you could use a gel alcohol. Now, this is the cube gel alcohol from Fire Dragon. It uh, works really, really well, but it does require something to hold it in place so it doesn't melt and drop through the grill. So this is when the little bowl like this or something works really well inside of the stove to hold it in place. So you could also use a little bowl like that with liquid gel alcohol uh, for similar performance as well. One other type of alternative fuel that you may want to use if it's available to you would be Sterno or another chafing fuel by another brand. So to use Sterno, my recommendation is start without anything inside of the stove. So you just have the open stove. Then you can take your Sterno and drop it down inside and it gives you a bit of difference to the distance to the top of the stove. This is the version that has the wick under the cap. This version is the one that has the open uh, gel alcohol inside. It also will fit in and give you a good pot gap as well. Now, you won't get high heat with a lot of intensity that'll bring your water to a boil very quickly, but it will work. It's great for simmering and it does last a long time. So it is an option I wanted to point out. All right, one last alternative fuel for use in this stove, which would be charcoal. So I prefer to use chunk charcoal, the natural shaped charcoal, but it's different. It's difficult to quantify how much it will hold. But if you're using briquette style charcoal, then I can tell you I can get 12 briquettes inside of the stove comfortably. And that will, well, it takes a little while for them to become engaged, but once they are, they produce a significant amount of heat, quite intense in fact, enough to easily boil water, do all your grilling on without flame, and last you a good long while. So just another option for using in the stove is charcoal. All right, we've gone over the LF stove, talking about how to use it with wood, with alcohol, with wood pellets, with solid fuel, with chafing fuels, and with charcoal. Only thing left to do now is to get outside and do some demonstrations. So I picked another windy day to come out and do some storm or some stove testing. I'm fortunate that I'm not under another fire ban here today, but another couple of days of this nice weather, windy, dry, sunny, and considerably warmer than it normally is for this time of year, uh, I'll have another fire ban, and then I'll have to think of something different to make videos on. But today, it's going to be on the two Bushcraft Essentials LF, large folding, 
in stainless steel and in titanium. Now you probably can't see it right now, but I have the titanium set up in that little plate, balance plate, case plate. I'll have to remember what the official name is, but uh, the other one isn't, of course. Now, the stainless steel I have full of about a cup and a half of pellets, and I'm going to use a little bit of alcohol to get it going. Just for the fun of it, I threw in a couple of pieces of fat wood because uh, you have it. You might as well use it. And in the other one, I have a base of birch bark and a couple of twigs off a pine tree nearby. And then, of course, I've got a, had a lot of splits here ready to feed as the stove goes. Now, the first part of the fire is always the flamiest, at least on that one. I'm going to start with this one. How am I going to light it? I need a little piece of birch bark for that, just to make life a little easier. Because it takes the wood pellets the longest to get going, of course. So I'll drop that inside. And that lit right up. Good. Put my alcohol away before I spill it. And the other one, all I should have to do is just to uh, light it. And it'll migrate into the birch bark. So I'll we'll watch it for just a couple of seconds here before I let it really catch before I put my pots on. On the stainless steel pot, I'm going to put on my zebra billy pot with some water in it for coffee or tea. Haven't quite decided yet. I don't think it's late enough in the day for a cup of coffee, although it's always time for coffee. But this time I'm going to probably just have tea. And on the other one, I have some leftovers from home. I'll show you what it is. It's, uh, it starts as a boiled dinner a few days ago. And now it's become something else. I'll show you that once the, the fire really gets going. So you can see the fire starting to take off now. And I'll bring you back when the fire is ready to put the pot on and the pan on. So I went ahead and put the zebra on top of the stainless steel version with the wood pellets. Let me cast a little shadow over it so you can see the flame inside. Just a nice, even, steady, smokeless flame. That's what you can expect from wood pellets. And especially in this stove, I think it works quite well. There are openings around the edge of the stove, the ones that are intended for the trivets to go through to set up uh, maybe the trangi or other things. Right now, I can see air being drawn in for secondary combustion. Now, it's not a wood gas stove, not, not even close, but it does draw air in at the level of the combustion and create a secondary burn. Now, over in the titanium one, you know, really simple. Uh, it has a bed of coals that I created mostly with some softwood like this when I started. And I just threw in two splits of hardwood. That's all the flame I need right there. Two little pieces of wood. That's all the flame I need for the cooking. In fact, any hotter than that. In fact, that may <laughs> be even too hot. I have to be careful about what I'm doing here. So let's start. Put my little carbon steel pan on. Put in some olive oil. And let that start to warm up. I mentioned a minute ago that my lunch was going to be leftovers from home. And uh, I'm sure this is not common to Nova Scotia. I'm sure it's been done a lot of places. I think it may have been an originally an English meal, which is boiled dinner. New England boiled dinner, I think it's also been called, which would mean it would be also from the American Northeast States. It just starts with a cottage roll or a ham, uh, quite a fatty ham to start with, but you, you, it's all to cook together in one pot. And in there you put potatoes and cabbage and uh, parsnips and uh, rutabagas, uh, carrots, whatever you want can go in there. And then it gets cooked down until it's soft enough. Got to pay attention to what I'm doing, I'm losing my wood. Oh, I'm going to have to put another piece in as well. But, uh, you know, that's a boiled dinner. And, you know, I eat it. I think a lot of people eat it. Uh, you know, you can put some butter on the potatoes. They're all very soft. But the cabbage, since I've been a kid, has always had to have vinegar. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why. Maybe it's just the way I was raised. But having some vinegar on the cabbage, a little salt and pepper, was all you needed. Now, the next day, or the day after, or the day after, but before, you, you know, you're, it's gone, uh, you cut it up into pieces small pieces, put it in a fry pan with some oil, and uh, we refer to it as bubble and squeak. I have no idea why, <laughs> but you just literally just 
braisin everything up in the hot fry pan and uh, serve it just like that. Some salt and pepper. I've got some other spices today, but bubble and squeak. So here's what it's going to look like. A couple pieces stuck in here. And all I need to do is just keep it moving. May need a little bit more oil. Now, if you're wondering, I did remove the potatoes because I have gone to a, at least for now, a low-carb diet. And a low-carb diet, you still eat vegetables, but you don't eat the heavy starchy vegetables. Lost a little bit of my flame. Not paying attention. I'm gonna have to get some flame going in here. Don't want a big flame though. All right, that'll catch that enough coals there. Right now, it's actually probably good that it's not too, too hot. Don't burn things and have it stick to the pan. But that's my dinner. So what I'm going to do is just work at this. It needs to be moved constantly. My flames are low right now, but they're going to build up in a second. So I have to pay attention to what I'm doing. And that will be my dinner. And we'll have a few more comments on these two stoves before we close out the video. I think that's just about ready. And that is bubble and squeak. Yeah, I think that is just about ready. Getting a little browned on the pieces, the cabbage and the vegetables and the meat. Great, all right. Good timing. I'm hungry. All right, a few final words on the Bushcraft Essentials Bush Box LF in stainless steel and in titanium. And as I mentioned before, I purchased the stainless steel version myself, but Bushcraft Essentials did send me the titanium version. So what are my thoughts? Well, let's do a little pro and con first. So the con or the pro, I guess, of the stainless steel version is its price. By comparison, it is cheaper than titanium. No surprise there. The con is its weight. It is a heavy stove, but that heavy stove means heavy duty as well. So it is heavier, but cheaper than the titanium. Pro of the titanium is super lightweight. The con is its price. It is more expensive. I guess it's a matter of what, which one you want to have. Something I noted before, but I just noted again when I finished the, having the fires in these two stoves, is the titanium had cooled off to the point that it was actually cold to my touch shortly, well, within minutes of the flames going out. There was no flames in this stove and I reached over to grab it and burnt my fingers. I forgot just how long stainless steel will retain its heat. Now, is that a con? Well, maybe if you want to get on the trail quickly, but if you're looking to rebuild a fire that's burnt down to coals, this one might be easier to do so because it does retain its heat longer. Okay, I think I can sum it up by saying that if somebody came to me today and said, Mark, you had to give up all the stoves in your collection um, except one, I would probably say, let me have the LF in titanium. It's the stove I'll reach for most often if I'm not testing stoves, because it is the one that just fills my needs. It's a one to two person stove. It'll do two people, but it's better as a one person stove. It's lightweight, compact, easy to use. What else can you ask for in a stove of this, of this design? But having said that, I am very fortunate not to have to give up my stoves, and I have a lot of stoves, as you're probably already aware, and I have a lot of stoves to bring to you yet. All right, if you have any comments on either of these stoves, uh, please put them in the comments section below. If you have any questions, please put those in the comments section below. I will be putting the information both where you can purchase these stoves from Bushcraft Essentials Direct, as well as there's a Canadian option here in Canada that I'll direct you to. I can't uh, say about American options, but uh, you know, I'm sure it shouldn't be too hard to find. I'll put also the specifications for two, both of these stoves in the show notes below as well. All right, that's all I have for this video. If you have any questions to mention, put them in the show notes below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.